The removal of the animals is just the latest in a long list of problems at wildlife in need that's dating back years. So let's go through what brought us to this day to offer a little more context on these events. So Tim Stark and Wildlife in Need have been surrounded by controversy for years now, but we're going to begin in 2016. That's the first time that our cameras were allowed on Stark's property. Tim Stark was accused of beating a leopard to death with a baseball bat in July of 2016. Instead of waiting for the vet to get there, he said a proper form of euthanasia was um, blunt trauma to the head repeatedly. The USDA also included over a hundred other violations in a 24 page complaint. Again, this was the first time Tim Stark let WHAS 11 be on the gates to see inside his so-called refuge. They won a war, they got a war because they're picking on the wrong damn person. Stark admitted in 2016 that he did beat that leopard to death with a baseball bat as a form of euthanasia. And in May of 2017, Stark was also accused of abusing a bear cub by PETA. They shared a video of a bear cub named Gizzy, who was 15 weeks old at the time, saying the bear was in clear distress. Then in October of 2017, PETA filed a lawsuit against Tim Stark and his ex-wife after an eyewitness investigation revealed that wildlife in need was separating big cat cubs from their mothers too early. The separation was so the cubs could be used in tiger baby playtime, where visitors would gather in a room and the babies could roam around and interact with the visitors. The cubs used in the baby tiger playtime were also subject to horrific suffering from decline, two cubs even dying from the decline. And then in June of 2019, an employee was attacked by a hyena on the wildlife in need property. Our crews went to the property in an attempt to learn more information, but we were told the employee was okay before being told to leave. We now know that employee, Scott Ely, joined the group of former volunteers in court, speaking out about conditions at wildlife in need. All we did was try to do the best for the animals, and all Tim Stark did was do his worst for them and blame everybody else. It's unknown how long the hyena was at the facility and if it is still at the facility or how long that volunteer had been working with that hyena. In February of this year, Shay McAllister, along with several other WHS 11 team members, broadcast a whistleblower story about wildlife in need and gave Tim Stark a chance to answer the accusations. Several former volunteers came forward sharing stories of malnourishment, neglect, abuse, and even death of animals. After telling the focus team about the problems, Shay took their concerns to Stark. And in a heated, profanity-riddled interview, Stark refuted the claims. Do I bend the rules, twist the laws? You better believe I do. In March of 2020, the country was glued to their TVs as Tiger King debuted on Netflix. Stories of roadside zoos became well known across the country, and claims of abuse and wrongdoing with establishments like Wildlife in Need were laid out to the public. Stark even made an appearance in the Docky series, helping one of the other zoo owners build a new facility. Then in April of 2020, two months after Stark appealed a decision by the USDA to revoke his exhibitor's license, Stark lost the appeal and was ordered to cease and desist. A USDA judicial officer ruled Stark willfully violated the Animal Welfare Act multiple times between 2012 and 2016. The license was first revoked in February of 2020, and the USDA also fined the facility $300,000 for 120 Animal Welfare Act violations. Stark personally fined $40,000. After consulting with our big cat veterinary expert in the case, it became clear that uh, not only was, was this animal um, very sick and, and didn't receive veterinary care, but it appears that the that at least some of the medications that were dispensed to this lion um, were dispensed in um, sort of overdose levels. Two big cats died on his property in mid-May, an elderly tiger and a young lion. PETA filed another lawsuit in May of this year, 15 pages worth of information they called the latest in Tim Stark's saga of animal abuse. The paperwork details the tiger's symptoms as similar to those documented in animals with COVID-19. And remember that other PETA lawsuit from 2017? In August of this year, the U.S. District Court for the Southern District of Indiana granted partial summary judgment in favor of PETA. They filed a permanent injunction forbidding Stark from allowing the big cat cubs to interact with the public separating mother cats and their infants, declawing and possession of tigers, lions and tiger lion hybrids on his premises that were unlawfully taken in violation of the ESA or Endangered Species Act. PETA submitted a motion related to the placement of the big cats at reputable sanctuaries. 
if the animals are not in safe and secure um, locations and, and they are in distress, then we would potentially go back to court and ask the court to issue some other order to have the animals moved from the property. At the end of August, the Indiana judge granted a state motion asking for animals to be removed from the property. The order says the state provided evidence to support taking over the animals to ensure their health and welfare. The order also made clear animals can go to temporary or permanent new habitats. The judge also said Stark has to keep taking care of the animals and he's not allowed to threaten or intimidate people who come to take his animals. They said that you told them you would shoot the animals in the head before you would let anyone take the animals. Yeah. Is that true? Nobody's going to take my animals. It's not going to be my animals that's going to pay the price. And then today, the beginning of the removal of animals from wildlife in need, the ultimate goal of those whistleblowers who shared their stories all the way back in February. Starting before 8 a.m., zoologists work to safely start removing hundreds of animals from Tim Stark's wildlife in need. The final destination of those animals will not be shared. Monkeys, bears, reptiles, skunks, possums, countless animals removed over the course of several days. The only animals that are staying behind, Stark's big cats. But a judge has ruled the day for the big cat removal will come. PETA is putting together a plan of action after winning a lawsuit for the big cat removal. We don't know when, but as of now, we know the day will come.